فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافاتي وتنهل من روبا الخير Age 12 and 20, 24%. 21 to 30, 57%. Try to see where you fit. For me, I'm not yet there. Badu, Badu, Mimi and Farouk Adam, not yet. Eh? 31 to 50, 15%. 66 and above, 1%. Meaning, Sheikh is talking mostly to the youth. And talking about the youth, there is a message from me. In the presence of the Sheikh and before the second session, as we arrange the bench, if the bench can be arranged the way we want us to sit. Young people, we always look for celebrities. You call them celebs. True or not true? When it comes to football, Ronaldo, huh? and all those funny names, those are your celebrities. And sometimes you have celebrities that are not Sharia compliant. At an age when we are talking about Sharia compliant finance, Sharia compliant food, can we call our Sheikh Sharia compliant celebrity? Is he or not? The message to the youth is this. You don't have to do haram to be a celebrity. Sharia compliant celebrity. Do you agree with me or not? Takbir. Now, we're going to the second session, but I hope you saw the CS whispering to me because we began late, late, so we were not going to move for the 45 minutes question and answer. And I was listening to the sheikh and taking notes. Well, some of the questions that I had prepared for him, he has already answered. So I will not ask him the questions that he has already answered. And because you were told this session has to be comfortable, it is a sofa set uh, uh, talk. I think I'll give this mic to the sheikh. Like so that I, can I don't need to remove. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I, because I want to face him. I want to look at his eyes when he's answering the questions. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable here. Okay, that's okay. I'm going to pretend to be a journalist. I'm not one, but today I'm going to turn into a journalist. And for him now, he's being interviewed. I'm sure he's used to this. There is no fire extinguisher, and I'm not going to remove my jacket. You know what I mean. Now, Sheikh Mufti, Wenk, most of the questions you keep on asking is about your name. We understand Ismail, we understand Musa, but Menk, where is it from? China or some other place? Very quickly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My brothers and sisters, I spoke about it in my talk. What were you doing, Sheikh? Were you listening or you were dozing? I, I was listening. <laughs> Subhanallah. Okay. I think uh, it's a surname, and surnames sometimes they. I was in, interested myself to find out where it's from and what has happened and so on. So we found similar names in many parts of the globe, but. If you ask me, I really would not be able to tell you so much of detail because I don't have it myself. Okay. But I do know that here in the crowd, there are approximately seven and a half thousand menks. Because we're all from Adam. And Adam was a mink, by the way. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, what I mean is, inshallah, he was a human being and so are we. Okay. So, alhamdulillah, actually, I, I don't know. I, in this, no, uh, perhaps somewhere up my great 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 grandfathers and it came down uh, we do have uh, roots within the Indian subcontinent as well as Yemen okay. so uh, these roots are mixed and lately we have African blood in us as well so it's amazing how Allah brings us all together and like I was saying um, we're all related somehow inshallah Jazakallah khairan now uh, second question uh, are you a Zimbabwean by accident or by Allah's plan? Do you, do you, by default or what? Very quickly. Okay, that's a very interesting question. My great-grandfather was in South Africa. Okay. And uh, he then left from there for Hajj and he passed away in Mina in 1904, I think. And my father, they are just two brothers. This was my great-grandfather. And then uh, he had uh, two sons. And thereafter, 
my father was born from his grandfather who's Ibrahim and uh, he he shifted to Zimbabwe in order to teach the Dean so he's actually a very active scholar a lot of the oldest generation from Nairobi from Kenya would know him because he used to visit here in the 80s and he knows quite a few in fact when I was leaving he told me you will meet Sheikh Abdul Ghafoor and a few others please give them Sheikh Rao and some others give them my kind regards and salam so it just to show you that I was born and raised in Africa so alhamdulillah I've been there by the plan of Allah Jazakallah khairan. Why I ask that? Because some people think that they belong to a country by accident. I believe we belong to Kenya by Allah's. Do you agree with me? If you think it is by accident, just pack and go. I don't know where you're going. Yeah. Sheikh, about your educational background, your educational background, because traditionally we are used to people who follow uh, religious uh, t trainings, mostly they, they don't speaking mostly they don't use english when they are talking we followed your lectures mostly in english and we know you are also you, you also educated deeply in islam just for the youth to know what is your education background i am still a student actually we learn every day more and more about the deen and i love those who correct me and those who uh, can tell me where I'm going wrong, even if it is in the English language. And I do have people, mashallah, may Allah bless them. They go through my talks, they listen to what I have to say, they correct my language, my choice of words, they correct the way I say things and my pronunciation. Uh, they know who they are, may Allah bless them all, and <laughs> may Allah grant them Jannatul Firdaus. Okay. Uh, the reason I start off this way is because uh, I think none of us should think that we have knowledge that is complete we will never have complete knowledge we continue to learn continue to correct ourselves until the day we die uh, i did start very early with my secular education at the government schools in zimbabwe initially the primary school was at a government uh, school and i was doing hif with that i completed my hif with the completion of my primary school my father being the sheikh i used to be with him uh, he has taught all my brothers and sisters the Arabic language and uh, the Quran and Tafsir and so many other things. I learned Urdu uh, with my father as well who taught us. He speaks Persian, he speaks Urdu and he's learned all these languages. So uh, we learned a little bit from what he has. Uh, then I wanted to, I, I joined a Christian college which was one of the best colleges in Zimbabwe uh, for secular education, being a top student, alhamdulillah. And uh, I wanted to always become an ophthalmologist. So sp specialize in medicine. And right at the end, I had already studied as much as I could about Islam. I studied the books of Hadith and so on by the age of, before the age of 18. And so I was ready to become a doctor. And suddenly there was an application that someone had put without my knowledge for Medina Munawwara. And the, the uh, acceptance note had come to me while I was still waiting for my acceptance from uh, a certain academy in Texas, in the States. And in the meantime, my father told me, you know what, um, you have just been accepted in Medina, so why don't you go? You cannot refuse Medina Munawwara. And so because I had this Islamic background, I was already a hafiz of the Quran, I could already speak uh, Arabic quite a bit, although it needed polishing if it were to become the medium of instruction. So I joined the Jamia al-Islamiya. Uh, the idea was to see how I fitted in. If I did, alhamdulillah, if I didn't, I would come back and continue with my medicine. And so the deal was when I finish, I would come back and still do my medicine. If I did finish. But when I went, it was very tough the first year because Medina Munawwara and the university there is quite difficult to actually survive in because of the weather, because of the heat, because of so many differences uh, in the, the way maybe the dormitories are set out and so on. Those who've been there, they know the challenges. And we're used to, you know, having our food ready and everything okay. And your mummy looks after you and now suddenly you're swimming in an ocean without mummy. Uh, having given you the float to float by. So Alhamdulillah, there was a time when one of the lecturers was lecturing and that I was, I'm sorry to confess to you that I used to cry sometimes missing home, you know. I used to cry sometimes missing home, only at the initial uh, stages. And uh, I remember I wanted to go in my heart, I used to say, I think I need to leave. And one day one of the lecturers was talking about Medina and the hadith from Al-Bukhari 
which says in al madinata tayyibatun tanfi al khabath kama yanfi al kiru khabath al hadid madina is pure it chases away and kicks out impurities the same way the blacksmith blows into the ore to kick out the impurities that hadith stuck in my mind and it went into my heart and i always told myself i'm not leaving i'm not impurity i'm not impurity if i leave maybe madina kicked me out so i don't want to go and so therefore i didn't go and within the next few months i started loving the place so much that there came a stage when i had to leave because i had graduated and i did not want to leave so that's madina and that's my journey after that i went to india obviously i specialized in the hanafi school of thought in order to learn and understand and to be able to uh, uh, learn and polish up the languages that i had learned already urdu and so on and to be able to work within our communities and societies uh, where we have a large ethnic indo-pak community and alhamdulillah i don't regret those days i really grew so much um, after that i continued learning i've participated in little symposiums workshops etc uh, there came a day when uh, there is a university based in the philippines called the aldersgate university it's a christian college actually and they decided to award me with an honorary doctorate in social guidance sort of social guidance so basically that happened in 2016 in april and uh, yeah subhanallah I, I was just amazed and i continue teaching and learning as best as i can uh, jazakallah khair wonderful one thing that your father was able to beat me in i'm not able to educate my own children at home very serious eh? how was he able to educate i think uh, a question for another day you are the grand mufti of zimbabwe currently yes is that a position that are you, are you an employee of the government or how do you become a mufti in zimbabwe that's a very interesting question because i've traveled to many countries and there are two three different types of muftis one is if it is a predominantly muslim country or a muslim country you will find the mufti is generally a part of the government or he belonging to an arm of the government but if it is a country where there are minority a lot of the times you will have national body it's a mufti so if that national body happens to work throughout the country they have you know the the, the strong relations with the government etc the mufti falls under the national body so that is the case with us majlis al ulama of zimbabwe is a national body that serves the interests of the muslims of the country uh, over the over many years they've built approximately 50 beyond 50 masajid and schools etc uh, they've done a lot of activity still continuing with a lot of the islamic institutions empowered thousands of uh, the locals uh, in uh, not only islamic studies but secular education as well which is extremely important and i happen to be elected as the mufti since the year 2000 so it's been 17 18 years Mashallah. every second year we have elections alhamdulillah Jazakallah khairan. Now, there's a lot in common between Zimbabwe and Kenya in that we have a Muslim community living within a majority non-Muslim community. How is the relationship between Muslims and non-Muslims in Zimbabwe? MashaAllah, we have a very, very good relationship with the non-Muslims. And like I said today, and I really mean every word that I uttered, we have to build relations. We do not break them we build bridges be they christians or jews or people who belong to the traditional faith so anyone else it is trust me we are citizens of the same nation if we were to uh, not to fulfill their rights we would not be able to survive ourselves we are in a minority we've been afforded the beauty of fulfillment of our faith in such a lovely way that sometimes even some of the muslim countries do not give some of the muslim countries do not give their citizens similar rights we need to know this it's a reality i'm sure if you study the world you'll come across some of these nations yeah. some but they're there so we have to appreciate it and we have to continue understanding, engaging, dialogue. We serve on interfaith boards as well, whereby we give and take, we understand, and you know, we respect each other's differences and we know that we will not trample on the toes of the others. We don't force and we shall not be forced. But at the same time, we respect and we live together. We contribute to the nation together. And alhamdulillah, that's the way I would like to see not only our nation, but all the nations, including yours, develop and grow by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't shy away from your Muslim identity because 
When you contribute to your nation with your Muslim identity, they acknowledge that yes, there are Muslims who are contributing to the nation and that's how you will achieve respect even amongst those who may have looked at Islam as a faith that perhaps the world is portraying to be barbaric, intolerant, extreme. No, we're not. We live in your midst. We are in the thousands, sometimes in the hundreds of the thousands and perhaps even in the millions in nations where we serve. There may be from amongst us a small group of people who might have a warped understanding. We will continue to engage them too to be able to come to the mainstream understanding that is definitely for the benefit of every one of us. May Allah bless us all. Jazakallah khairan. Maintain your identity and engage. Remember in Kenya, the constitution gives us the freedom of worship. We have the Qadis courts. We have the Education Act recognizing the Muslim Education Council headed by our brother Munawar Khan sitting here. So we engage without losing your hijab, without losing your identity as a Muslim. That is the message. Mufti Menk, maybe among the last few questions, and I feel it's becoming hot now. I feel like removing my jacket. Uh, if, you re if you notice, I actually told them to turn the fan on before you came in, okay. because I knew it's you hot. would feel the heat. Yeah, because I would say, and what a guest. If you want to know something else, when he initially started it, it was facing me. And I told him, rotate it please to face everyone because the heat is about to be felt. What a guest. <laughs> what a topic, I would say that. Eh? Now, now, about madrasa teaching, eh? I have a question. Yes. This is personal because of my experience. When my parents became Muslims, I was taken to a, actually a Duxi. Duxi is a Quran school. And the biggest, one of the, 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 the most important teaching aids or tools of teaching is a big stick. Big stick. What do you think about the kind of corporal punishment that goes on in madrasas? In education now it is banned. But in our madras, I can see the minister smiling because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. The first, cane and yes, the madrasa. The cane. I spoke about Abel and Cain. So Cain was the killer. So don't use the cane. Okay, okay. Uh, I can tell you something very interesting. Firstly, you use the word duxi. Is it duxi? Yeah, duxi. Duxi is a friend of mine back at home. His name is Duxi. So when you said we were taken to Duxi, I thought you, that man is younger than you, subhanallah. But anyway, I learned something and I, I'm sure he will listen to what I have to say and he will be very interested to hear it. But let's get back to what you were saying. My brothers and sisters on a serious note, who was the best teacher ever? Was it not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? How many Sahaba did he build and educate? Were they not the greatest? How many did he beat up in order to teach them? Even one? No. So when we beat up the kids, we're actually displaying our own inability. That's what I believe. Because the messenger you claim to follow never beat up. Look, there's a child in front of me smiling so broad. I hope you are not beaten by your or what's it called the duxi subhanallah <laughs> you know it's a fact when i see the people actually beating up kids i think to myself your nabi did not beat them to teach them the deen no he didn't how many became hafiz many of them they were the champions of hadith they were the ulama of ulama they were not beaten they loved it. They enjoyed the environment, the company. They wanted to be there. Today we're talking about deen. We're talking about faith, religion, building bridges, etc. Who forced you to come here? No one. Subhanallah, you registered to come on your own. May Allah bless you. I think the reason is you knew when we go there, we are going to be inspired. We are going to feel like good Muslims. We are going to get something we need. We are going to actually be listening to something that will empower us. That's why you came. So if our duxies can employ the same methods to empower, to inspire, to give people hope, to make them feel that identity and not to just judge them and tell them you are going to hell and you are going to burn in Jahannam and the fire of Jahannam is right behind the wall.
that if you don't keep up, you chase people away from the deen, including your own children. They don't want to learn the Quran because for them, it's a burden. I'm going to go there. What's going to happen? Let's teach them in a beautiful way. You might say, what is that way? Well, that is a topic on its own. I've spoken about it in the past in some of my lectures. Maybe one day in the future, we might have a workshop to address the muallimin and muallimat, inshallah, and address this matter. But my brothers and sisters, when teaching the deen, even in your own home, you're encouraging your children for salah. Don't say, come and read Salatul Fajr or I'm going to beat you. No, that's not the way. You rather say, come with me, let's see. In fact, I want to teach you something that came to my mind now. When you fulfill your salah and when you do something good, have a good expression on your face. Very good. When you fulfill salah, get up without looking lazy and show that you are so enthusiastically interested in it. When your kids watch you, they're going to say, look at mom. She gets up so happy in the morning. And look at dad, he's excited and he goes for salah. He comes back in a good mood and he's there like the world has actually been thrown at his feet. They will come for salah on their own. The problem with us, get up for salah last minute. We are rushing half closed eyes. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Sami Allah, 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 Allah. Ah, Back into bed. The child says, oh, this is something you're not supposed to be doing. So it's a method of teaching. Show a good expression. When you wear your hijab, for example, smile. MashaAllah, it looks lovely. You know, your kids must see you in a good mood. Not I wore my hijab. And that's it. No smiling. The kids are going to subconsciously think that mom, every time she wears the hijab, she's in a bad mood. You know, no. That's how you educate your kids. Choose the method. Be, enthusi be happy when you sit with the Quran. Sit happily. Read aloud. Smile. Look very excited before and after your act of worship. See, they will come. Anyway, that's something that just came to my mind. So what the point of the whole uh, issue that I'm trying to raise is that, you know, the methods of encouraging and teaching change with the changing of times. But the message itself does not change. So the deen will not change. But today, you might want to use technology as bait in order to get your child to do things. You have brownie points they can get. You have stars they can accumulate. You get 10 stars, I give you one hour on your iPad. MashaAllah, they will get 10 stars. You can use it as a bargaining tool. We have a naughty corner. You put someone in the naughty corner. Someone, after 50 years, they might come with research to prove that a naughty corner is actually emotional abuse. They might say that because you're abusing the child. So. When they come with that research, we might have to change the method. We'll make a good corner to say everyone else remains here and all the good people go there. It could happen. But we keep up with the times, inshallah. Not that the message changes, but the methods change. Everything else is being marketed in the most powerful, beautiful, attractive way. Why can we not use similar marketing for the deen, for religion? I think we can, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. That is wonderful. Let us not make our children on Saturday because it's the day to go to Marad. They pray, Ya Allah, Anzil Alayna Marad. May Allah send down disease so that we don't go to Madrasa. This is what is happening. At least I used to pray that on Friday night I fall sick not to go to Madrasa because of the terrorism, terrorism in the Madrasas. But I'm sure the stakeholders have heard that. Munawar Khan and your team in Muslim Education Council, uh, please, we need to do something. There is a picture going on in the social media. Recently, if I can add, yeah. recently I saw maybe a picture. I, I'm talking of a video. Yes. There was a video of a madam at a school who, as the that, kids are entering, she's hugging them yes. and turning them around and each one goes in so happy. Yes, and then exactly. they're showing uh, Malam, the sheikh, he's beating one by one, hew, 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 as they're going in, you know. Have you seen it? Well, I think you, I, I sent it to quite a few of the mallams, you know, quite a few of the muallimin and the teachers. And they were telling me, we are going to make a video showing a better acrobatics than the other teacher. We will show you. Yeah. I said, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Subhanallah. May Allah bless us all. I think uh, that video, it was a little bit far-fetched, but it does touch some form of reality. Uh, to a certain extent, it yeah. definitely hits home. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of us learning lesson. And really, your kids, your children, those who are learning from you, they are your friends. Yes, they will be the line of respect because you are a parent or a teacher. 
but at the end of the day they are your friends inshallah uh, i hope that we can make more whatsapp videos yes. that can show the other side of the coin yes, inshallah and i think we shall stop comparing uh, the ma'allim with jibril because they say the only way the prophet sallallahu could learn iqra is by being squeezed so the child has to be squeezed and my answer is that my child but hang on hang on hang on that lady in that video was she not squeezing those kids that man who was whipping them was nowhere squeezing them. The, the cane was squeezing them. Be careful, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. Lastly, but not the least, Sheikh, your fine word to Kenyans. You've just come from a very heated political season. We have a lot of things going on in the country. We need healing. What is the final message to your Muslim brothers and sisters in this beautiful country, the pride of Africa? My brothers and sisters, before I answer the question of uh, my, my final words for, for my brothers and sisters here in Kenya, in Nairobi, I want to go back and pick on something that you said a little bit earlier and just uh, give it a little bit of tweaking, tweaking. You see, we have celebrities. Yes, we do. Celebrity, when I looked up the word in the dictionary, it means a famous person, someone famous. But unfortunately, that word is used in the pop industry, music industry, etc. So it's become a word that is synonymous with that which is entertainment. So to use the term celebrity when it comes to Islam leaves a slight bad taste in the mouth because of reducing it to mere entertainment when it isn't or it shouldn't be so i want to tweak it by saying if you and this is going to be some point of learning that can go down in history inshallah whenever you learn the deen from someone understand that it is the message you are more interested in rather than the person who brought it so don't glorify me as an individual if you like the way i put things across no problem. You pray for me and pray for others too. If you like the recitation of a specific Imam, and maybe the recitation of others might not inspire you in the same way or touch you, because maybe you like a specific tone or tune, there is nothing wrong in having a favorite reciter of the Quran, and we all do, and I do too. And for your information, my favorite changes every time I hear another person who perhaps, uh, you know, touches a chord within me. Okasha Kimene is a powerful reciter. Have you heard of him? Go and check him out. Really, his recitation touches me. Raad al-Kurdi, his recitation touches me. For example, originally, I was a fan of Saad al-Ghamidi. Before that, I was a student of Sheikh Ali al-Hudayfi, for example, and so on. But when it comes to the speech and the lectures and the teaching the same rule applies you might have a favorite a favorite lecturer because when he talks to you maybe he inspires you maybe he motivates you to do good and maybe someone else might not be your favorite because they make you feel so unacceptable they make you feel like you're already burning in hell there's no harm in having a favorite for as long as that favorite is taking you closer to allah and not to himself so the day I come and promote my own self, that's the day you go away from me. Because the only reason why you know me, let's face facts, is because of the deen. If I was promoting anything else, we would not know each other. Do you agree? So let's keep it that way. Let the deen be of motivation. There's no harm if someone is famous for the right reasons. No harm. There's no harm if you want to go to a specific lecture and you do not want to go to another lecture there's no harm actually those who say that you have to go to every lecturer they are wrong the reason why they are wrong is there are so many who doom us i personally and they themselves who claim that you got to go to everyone they have their own favorites they have their own people who they love listening to why when i listen to this person i feel like being a better muslim i feel like being a better human being nothing wrong so i don't like to actually use the term celebrity to refer to Islam and the Muslims. And I also need to make it clear that when we do attend, the idea should be 
to obey the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to become closer, to be softened. You know, there is a lot I could say, but uh, that much in, inshallah is a good enough dose for today. Getting back to Kenya, beautiful place, lovely safari, mashallah. Although I haven't personally been, but I am encouraged because of the, the, the very beloved person who is seated on my right, have, you know, being in a very strategic position regarding tourism, it would only be correct if I also gave the lions of this nation a bit of a show, inshallah. You know, so the next time, inshallah, we'll have our session, a, perhaps, Masai Mara, inshallah. May Allah make it easy. There we are. I got it. Will it be fully sponsored, Sheikh? Oh, wow. You heard that, guys. You heard it. You know, they say strike when it's hot. It was hot. We struck. Sheikh, mashallah, mashallah. Beautiful nation. Please build it. Please build bridges. Please mend relations. Please live with everyone in harmony and peace. Never let anyone make you become a vehicle of destruction. Don't let anyone convince you that your religion teaches you to destroy and harm because it doesn't. Wallahi, we are fortunate to be here and living in harmony. If we are going to disturb the peace, we are all going to pay the price of it in the same way that the others are paying a price today across the globe. Just flick the news channel and watch it. Don't go there. Don't. Be sensible. The most sensible people are those who see others destroying themselves and they protect themselves. I'm not going to do what they did. What did they do? Sectarian violence for nothing calling people kafirs for nothing destroying people because they belong to another faith for nothing be careful if you start that way i promise you you will end in this, the same way look at what they did you can be the strictest muslim you want to be worship allah and convey the message to others and that's it you can never be stronger than the nabi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there were Jewish people he struck an agreement with in Medina Munawwara. There were people he lived with. When he passed away, you know his armor was given as collateral to a Jewish trader. So he traded with them too. Be careful how you look at others. Build your nation. Respect those who don't share your faith. Perhaps they are not belonging to the same sect as you. Like I said, it's your right to belong to what you feel is the best, but it is their right too. They might not be convinced. Who's going to be their judge? It's Allah. Maliki Yawmiddin, owner of the day of judgment. Why do you want to become an owner of judgment here? Every little while, these people don't deserve to live. Those people need to be harmed. Look at the bombings and the killings happening across the globe. In the name of the, the one who told us to build, we are destroying in the name of the one who told us in the name of the one who gave the life in the first place. Who gave the life? Allah. Who gives you the right to take that life away? He gave it. He is more powerful than you and I. If he wanted to take the life away, he could take it away. Why do you have to get involved in that negative way? Be careful. Don't let people confuse you to think that the more religious you are, the harsher you should become. No. A true sign of religiousness and piety is when you're softened. Like I said, those who are weak, listen, I just thought of something right now. Brother MC, Sheikh Ibrahim asked a question about the cane. And what did I say? I said, when you use that corporal punishment, it is a sign of a weakness within yourself. The same applies to violence. When you use violence to, to try and compel people to what you believe, it's a sign you are so weak. It's a sign you are actually very, very weak. The problem is with you, not with them. You don't have the patience, the courage, the education to, to reach out to people positively, so you want to shove it down negatively. Subhanallah. We are facing the same problem inside our own religion. Don't let other people taste that type of so-called solution because it's not a solution. So this is my word to you as a nation. Please, please build the nation. Contribute towards it. Don't lose your Islamic identity. Don't. But remember, your identity itself is a da'wah. The more people who are convinced that Islam is a beautiful religion, the more kudos to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good reward. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair. I think without note of 
do not destroy this nation do not lose your identity I think we want to end up there we can listen to the sheikh on and on and on but we have to end it here there is now, something there is something magnetizing about this crowd and that is i just feel like going on and on and on as well mashallah so silent so patient so beautiful so mashallah attentive are you noticing the same thing would you like to May come Allah back again you. would you like to come back again no i'd like to sit for longer right now Say, inshallah. Inshallah. can you bring your family here Okay. Sheikh Najib is trying to convince me to create a family here. Uh, yeah, oh, create a family here, mashallah. Up to four. No, you are allowed I, I, up to four. Brother, you are forgetting we are live on TV. Oh, thank you. You know? You are forgetting the fact that I have uh, family members who are watching what I'm saying. Khair, inshallah. May Allah forgive me and may they, may they forgive me too, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. And with that note, <laughs> brothers and sisters, I thank you. That has been a wonderful afternoon. We'd like it to go on and on. It's captivating, but we have to end it. And now I want to hand over the microphone to the Honorable Cabinet Secretary, our brother, Honorable Najib Balala, to give a vote of thanks. I know we have other dignitaries here, but we had to pick on one of them who has been very instrumental in organizing this to give a vote of thanks. And remember, tomorrow the Sheikh will be down to Mombasa. If you still want to go down, you can fly Kenya Airways. 5.40, Jumbo Jet, they can, ah, it will be live stream, so you can, you'll still have another date with the Sheikh. I'm not using celebrity anymore, Sharia compliant, I'm not going to say celebrity. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Mufti Mink is a great honor once again. This is the third time you have graced this country with inspiration and blessings that you have brought from knowledge from Allah. We have seen here majority are youth because this youth are yearning for knowledge and that is why they are here today. Mine is to say we acknowledge all those members who registered, you have been told the statistics 8,000 registered, and today we are here. I remember when I come on this auditorium, we come here to do politics. But today I'm proud and privileged that we are here doing da'wah for our religion. We as a nation, we don't, think, we don't take things for granted. As Muslims, we are recognized by our country through the constitution, by our government, through the appointments of senior positions. And I want to recognize my brother Adan Duale, who is the leader of government in the House of Representatives of the people of Kenya. Maybe I just invite you to say one word. Salam. Traditionally, in these events, we don't have speeches. Mine is to say thank you, Sheikh. We want to thank you very much. We know you came from a long trip of, from Sydney and Perth and then Zimbabwe and then here. You're going back to many other events. I was a bit jealous when you went to Sierra Leone and the football stadium of over 100,000 people was filled. I said one day we will have the Kasarani Stadium filled listening to your khutbah, inshallah. Because of we are here, Parklands Mosque, uh, my brother Fawz Khureishi, thank you very much. I want to thank my two beloved brothers. Uh, Altaf Ganatra and Shamil Farooq, thank you very much for coordinating all this and making it happen. As you have been told by my brother Ibrahim, Ukiona Viaolea, Vimeundwa, and the people who are behind this success.
but it's the arrangements and the logistics and behind the scenes that have been perfected through time to today. So Altaf and Shamil, thank you very much. The youth and the volunteers who have been here, there have been over 100 youth who have been here. We want to say thank you very much. Uh, and particularly the Horizon V for the live coverage and other media, including NTV, which is here, and the Ikra and the Star Radio. All of you, thank you very much. And finally, I want to thank Mr. Ibrahim Lidome with the capacity and the experience you have. You have managed to moderate this event very successful. So mine you say thank you very much, all the members who've attended today, brothers and sisters, our Sheikh once again, we can't thank you. We have to thank you every time. We thank Allah, but your presence has brought harmony. And I believe Muslims in this country are not vehicles of destruction, irrespective of our indifferences. So mine is to say thank you all and God bless you. Shukran. Jazakallah khair. khair, brother Najib Balala for those words. Remember tomorrow Sheikh will be in Mombasa and I've just been informed by the management of Iqra, uh, Horizon TV from Jamia Mosque. It will be live on Horizon. So again tomorrow you have another opportunity to listen to Mufti Menk uh, as he's talking to Mombasa. So that is double benefit, inshallah. Now we want to end here, but before the closing dua, a few announcements. As we said, we want to show our Islamic identity, even in our movement. Please, we don't want to hear any child who broke their leg because of stampede. We don't have to stampede. There is no deadline as to when you need to get out here. Please, I say the ladies, even if your husband is on this side, please, you'll meet outside there. Just send a text message. Sweetheart, can we meet outside there? And you too, you can do the same. So move. We begin with the people sitting in the middle. The exits will be open. Don't, not yet, not yet. Be patient. Sober karu, sober karu, sober karu. You know, not yet. And then the others move from this side. Go to the prayer area. And please, leave Kasarani Gymnasium cleaner, than you found it. So we want to end up there, but with the dua. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta tawab rahim. Allahumma wafiqna bima tuhib wa tarzah. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Wa fi al-akhirati hasana. Wa qina adhab al-nar. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi sahabi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Shukran. Jazakumullahu khair.